Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm just getting kind of situated. I had to change my angle last minute. And when you change the angle, you got to change the light. You got to change the mic. Got to change a bunch of things. But I'm so excited for our first live Cello Tip Tuesday. And I am going to be working on Benjamin Britten's suite number one, but I really want to present my practicing tips in a way that anybody can use any level, any piece. So I'm going to be speaking in a lot of general terms in addition to specific things about the suite. So, so excited you guys are here and please give the video a thumbs up and a subscribe to show your support for the channel. And I'm going to leave these up. For those of you who can't watch with me in real time and i also encourage you all please ask me questions if i do something and it doesn't make sense or why is that helpful or how did you do that please this is your chance to ask me questions in live time and i can demonstrate things for you too so super excited and i'm about to get started Hi, Arthur from Brazil. Hello. I love seeing you guys pop up in the chat. So please chat away. And I am going to be starting with the fugue, fuga, which is the second movement of the Britain suite. So this suite or this movement is there are a lot of small small 30 second notes and you got to hear every single one of them and it's hard because it's happening in a slur like a teacher goes yeah I gotta hear every single one of those super clearly and it's hard because you have to actually articulate it with the bow and pair it up with your fingers so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find all the places I have those and play it a little under tempo so playing stuff at a slower tempo super helpful um, just so your brain has time to process what has to link up. And if you just try to do it fast and hope it works, probably not gonna work, right? So you gotta give your brain time to process things. So starting slowly and figuring out what's going on and being super observant is a super plus, no matter what you're playing. Right now it's stubborn 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. help your hands so don't involve your head she says to convince herself seconds. I don't know if you guys heard all of them, but almost every time I have to change the bow, yeah, a lot of 30 seconds happening. And I'm so excited. Hello, people. Susan, Ray, Arthur, Backyard Grill Sergeant, thanks for watching. Please, if you have any questions about practicing, please use the chat. I'm so happy to help you guys. Okay, so that 
was a big section and I'm trying to really articulate with the bow inside of a slur, which is weird because slurs are supposed to be smooth. But if you have to be articulate, like with these 30 seconds of being so obsessive about, you can get away with a little bit of a dip. And I'm doing that with my pointer finger. You're not supposed to do it all the time, but this is kind of an exception to the rule because these 30 seconds are really pesky <laughs> and they need a little bit of extra help. So I have another spot where there's a bunch of them. Uh, let's start. This is hard. I got to play two strings at once. because I'm playing on two strings, but I got to lean on the string with the melody. So... I didn't hear it. Right there. from Kiko. What method of practice or routine do you do to develop resistance? It's a very good question. Kiko, could you let me know what you mean by resistance? Do you mean resistance like in the bow to project a big sound? Um, I would love to answer your question. I just want to know what you mean by resistance um, because that can be a lot of things. Do you mean tension in the body? Do you mean resistance as in really? Like really pulling out a big sound of the string? Let me know what you mean by resistance because um, I really want to help you out. And I can demonstrate because it's live. So let me know what you mean by resistance. Um, I'm going to go back to these 30 seconds. <laughs> resistance resistance for left hand with double stops well this is kind of a tricky it's not super double stoppy double stops um that's kind of like two notes at once this is a line happening against an open string which is kind of like i like to think of that as two voices so really my hand isn't having to stop the d string um so i don't have to hold down the d string which is nice but i do have to have a super arced um left hand in the fingers because if my fingers are flat and flappy you're gonna scrape your d string so this is kind of a slightly different than a double stop. So even though I 
want the melody to be heard, the D string still has to be, um, we still have to make way for the D string. Okay, so this is kind of different than a double stop. And also, Edith, you are making my day. You're so sweet with your comments. Um, Edith says, bow straight, loose wrist. I'm done here. Don't be done, Edith. There's always so much more to learn. Uh, your fingers are perfect. Well, <laughs> they're 19 years of experience. I don't think that means perfect. Always working. Um, so for those of you who are just tuning in, I am working on some pesky 30 seconds here. Um, another spot, 30 seconds. I want them to be clear in my bow. It's a tricky ship. You don't have a lot of time, so I want to isolate that ship. That's what has to happen in a 30 second. <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm shooting my hand back, which isn't very effective. Um, I have to... I was flipping my fingers back, but I shouldn't do that. I should keep this uh, hovering shape. So that was That's better. I got to keep my weight here. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be educational. You're going to see me repeating a lot of stuff. And this is what I do all day. I sit, I analyze, and I repeat. <laughs> okay. Um, Kiko, thank you for specifying. She said, um, like, we, like when you have to play a long, complex segment, difficult for both hands, that you can really play in one try at first. So I think what Kiko means is, um, I think what, from what I understand you were saying, um, stamina, how to build up stamina when you have to play complicated, long stretches. And if you want to build up stamina, it's think about a runner running a marathon, right? You don't just run a marathon and think it's going to get easier each time. You have to build it up gradually in small chunks. And if you want to build up stamina, you have to be super aware of your body. Um, if you just try to go really hard, um, you might strain a muscle or goodness forbid, injure yourself. So you really need to be self-aware and start with smaller bits. And also be aware of what makes you tired, right? Um, a big example is uh, Shostakovich Concerto. For those of you, I play that a lot in my posts. It's my favorite piece. And that one has a lot of chords. So what I did um, for that situation, I played the sections with chords. And I was kind of thinking, you know, what's making me tired or so forth with chords, big chords, um, you have to be heavy in your arm. So I was noticing if I wasn't sinking into my weight, I was straining a lot artificially. So I was sinking in more and I would just play those passages um, maybe once through 
um, every, I don't know, every 10 minutes. And then I would try to play it twice through. So these are just all things you can do to build up your stamina. Um, so I'm going to pick actually, Ooh, here's a part with some chords since I was talking about chords. Um, and I want you guys to see how low I try to keep my arm. That's been my big thing. I've been trying to really keep track of this because I get a lot of comments like your elbow seems high. Your elbow seems high. I think your elbow should be lower. And I'm like, I know, I know. It's not a switch. You can't go elbow down, okay? It's something you gotta work on over time. And my elbow has come down a lot since when I was younger. Um, so self-awareness, I'm gonna play these chords and I'm gonna focus on my elbow now. So I was focusing here and I'm gonna focus here. Uh, that shift still, oh. Ozan asks about dampets. Hello, Mr. Dampet. So these are dampets. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, if you, so I'm going to quickly talk about how to use them in like two seconds, but I actually want to make a full video about dampets because they're super helpful, uh, especially in the winter. Um, so basically what a dampet is, it feels like plastic. And inside this kind of flexible tube, you have a sponge. And when the damp is inside your instrument, it's not going to be soaking wet, okay? When you run it under water, you're supposed to um, dry it and squeeze to get excess water. And it's going to soak the sponge inside. And once you put it in your instrument as the water evaporates, it's going to release some healthy moisture for your instrument. Now this is all happening on a microscopic level because you want to dry out the damp it so you don't have water damage, right? And um, Ozan was asking how much water do you put in and when do you decide to make it wet again? Um, so you can't really measure the water, but I would, I wring it, I gently squeeze it with a towel. And then I wipe it again with a paper towel, especially the bottom. I give the bottom a little squeeze. Um, this, ugh, can't really see it. This part. Um, so I squeeze out some access water. And then the outside should be dry and you shouldn't have any water running. Give it a couple more squeezes until there's no access water on your paper towel. Then you put it in and usually when it's hard to the touch, you got to redo it to be safe. I do mine every day because it's really dry where I am right now. So that's a little bit about dampens. I want to get back to Britain, but great question. Um, Ozan, I really hope that's how you say it. Great question. Uh, but I want to do a video on dampens. That's way more in depth because uh, it can save your instrument. Can you walk through your bowing hand technique? I don't have the whole evening. <laughs> That's like a day. That's like a 24 hour live stream to talk about the bow. I mean, like 24 hours, maybe a week. 
But I'm going to talk about bow technique in the context of this piece. I promise. I've been talking about the bow quite a bit already. All right. So I'm working, I'm talking about these uh, 30 seconds. I still, they're still giving me troubles. So I was saying before, I'm doing a little extra weight in my pointer. And I'm timing it with the 30 seconds. That's what they should all sound like that clear you know what i want to do that hold on so i'm going to find some 30 seconds so i'm just isolating the trouble the troublesome bits microscopic breath. See? Now it's in tune because I gave myself time to be in tune and I didn't lose my tempo. That's the only rule. Don't lose your tempo. intonation on those double stops those are big doubles not big but those are like more textbook definition double stops um, <laughs> also like give you guys some advice um this we're gonna do that again so i'm finding my uh, bass notes too sharp uh slowly in 
into uh, how it's written. <laughs> single bow stroke. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Um, see, it didn't catch. I'm literally thinking, dig, 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 every single note. and then the right hand for the clarity. And that's what you guys have to do sometimes. You have to like focus on this hand and practice this hand and then practice this hand and put them together. And if it doesn't sound good, you gotta go back. So it's like weird patty cake. <laughs> this hand, that hand, then together. Boom, 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 boom. Michael. I teach middle school and assigned a YouTube inspiration hunt for students last week and several found your string crossing video. No! Oh my God! Michael, you made my day. Would be fun to have you Skype in a class sometime. Michael, send me an email. You're so sweet. I love that. That's amazing. I'm so happy that my videos are reaching people. Yeah, Mike, send me an email, thecellodoll at gmail.com. Um, I think the contact info is also in the description. Thecellodoll at gmail.com. Okay, I'm gonna play that part again. I'm gonna do it from the beginning uh, so I can practice a couple things, the 30 seconds, um, the tuning, putting it back in a context, right? You can work on something isolated and then you got to put it back into the product, back into the context of the piece, right? So if you guys would shed like one measure of music, then you got to kind of maybe do the three measures around it. Boom, boom, boom. You got to build it back in. Um,
between the notes but with each note and I think what's happening I'm getting my brain's getting kerfuffled as the music gets more uh more active which is a very common thing so what I gotta do I gotta make my brain stop multitasking and really focus on what I have to do it's like my everyday struggle in life I want to do everything at once guys Uh, again. <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> okay um i want to go to a different part um what do i want to do next i want to two more double stops actually um <laughs> bass notes again you guys are all so sweet i am seeing your comments i promise i'm just i'm in the music right now uh thank you molasses hands i also love your username molasses hands it's really funny your one minute videos do you no justice well thank you they are a minute you don't have a lot of time in a minute um but i do my best
articulation, bow. I'm going to switch. I'm going to go to a slow movement and we're going to talk about vibrato. Everyone's been wanting me to talk about vibrato and I'm telling you guys, I promise I will. I promise. It's just a really big topic and I want to be sure there's like so much to cover that I want to plan it out more before I make a video. But I'm going to go to Lamento, which is the next movement after this. And it's very sad. I'm talking about, I want to work on my vibrato with this. <laughs> is actually moving this is what it's doing everyone thinks it's all the wrist and that's the first mistake with vibrato is people think it's all on their wrist and that's misleading because from far away i can see why it looks like that but your whole arm do cello rubs cello fingerboard rubs activate that arm so it's like a uh, a whole unit. because to keep the motion as you shift. That's tricky. I want it to sound like, it should sound like I never stopped vibrating. Even though I do have to to shift, the, the consistency of vibrato should be even. So I'm really... Again. 
music gets intense, don't put the tense in your body when the music's intense. And that's really hard for me. Um, so I really, I'm trying to think more lately, lately, recently, I've been... <laughs> passionate and he purposefully you know it's supposed to be a passionate part i think and i think it's um in the music the music uh speaks for that so i think um The arrival is me settling and sinking into the note, not into the note. I'm trying to think like, I'm, you know, when you guys like fall into a hammock or onto a cushy bed, that's what I'm trying to think about in my arms when I arrive at a note like that. Also, there's something in my eye. <laughs> ah, what's happening? Ah. Uh. Ugh, feels like an eyelash. This is the content you've all been craving. Ah, oh, get out. <laughs> it's fine. Keep it together. It'll be fine. I don't need my eyes to play music. Because I, this is technically memorized, so I don't need my eyes. It's fine. <laughs> about this one um he wants me to have a uh, a bigger arc in terms of like dynamics and intensity um so i want to do that again keeping the loose vibrato and i also want to i want to pace my dynamics better um it's mostly in piano and then the big moment the first big moments mezzo forte so i want to do a better job <laughs> also if you guys are doing vibrato take a note and hold it forever seriously take a note until you hear a sound you like That's pretty. So what am I doing? Once you find a pretty sound, what is your body doing? I'm easy here. My elbow is a little higher. My balance is only slightly behind this finger. I'm not on the finger, I'm just leaning back a smidge. Before I was leaning back farther, I was too far back. So I'm a little, little more, a uh, little more on top of the finger. Shimmery, shimmery.
So that was four measures. No. Actually, this movement's kind of weird. It technically doesn't have a time signature, but that was just like four phrases. Not a lot. And we worked a lot on this. Um, so there was something I did I never did before, and I actually liked it, but I don't know if it's too schmaltzy or cheesy. <laughs> if he doesn't like <laughs> my teacher will tell me if it's too over the top he knows that's how I like to be so. he, he reins me in sometimes but actually lately he's been telling me to be more um out there and more um I don't know I don't know the word for it just to be more um daring more daring so I'm gonna do it
So you're coming from pianissimo, diminuendo. Now it's a totally new character. how to get from one musical world to the another. So I'm kind of like soft and delicate. And then my forte. and they're like, yay, I did it, and they move on. But you got to reinforce 
the good technique or the 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 right bow technique um a good ship you got to reinforce when something goes well because it is a saying like hope lightning doesn't um hope you're a uh, you know, can you make lightning strike twice here? You know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to do it again. consistent now. You got to play detective. So I'm taking a little bit more time and I'm leading with the elbow, which I talked about earlier. And I'm thinking about that sinking into the, lo the loud sound. Um, for those of you who weren't here earlier, I talked about like sinking into a bed sinking into a loud sound. Um. tonight um for the very first live stream Jolla Dip Tuesday um I really hope you guys learned some new tricks um no matter what piece you're playing I really try to talk about these in a way that you can use them in your everyday practicing um again no matter what the piece no matter what level you are um, so I really hope you guys like these. Um, please leave a comment below and let me know if you enjoyed these. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm really trying to catch up on my YouTube comments, so I will get to your comments eventually. And yeah, so let me know if you enjoyed these. And I really want to keep these up the last Tuesday of every month um is when i want to do these so this was the last tuesday of january thank you guys so much for watching please be sure to subscribe i know i say that a lot but it really really helps um i really want to grow this channel and you guys can help me do that just by subscribing and liking a video it it helps i'm not even kidding every person who does it really helps um exciting things what are exciting things 
Um, I just had a video come out today with Cello Bat, aka Sarah, and my Cello Coven duet buddy. Um, so I posted it everywhere, but it's on her channel. Um, so I just released that with two other cellists, um, Adam and Caitlin, and you guys should go check that out. Um, we did Dream On, not Dream On. Oh my God, Living on a Prayer. Dream On was a different video. We did Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. And so that came out today. I have a surprise for you dolls coming out tomorrow or Thursday, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be tomorrow. Um, so surprise video coming out on a surprise day. And then Saturday, 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 Saturday. Opera music video premiere, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Save the date, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. It's been on my channel for a bit. You guys don't wanna miss, um, we're working with a beautiful uh, baritone, Carrie Wilkerson and Annie Brooks on piano, directed by Crystal Manich. And it's a beautiful opera music video. And I get kind of creepy as usual. And we had a lot of fun. So that is this Saturday. And that is also on my channel. You can visit the video, hit set reminder, and you'll get a notification. Also, we are having a live meet and greet Zoom reception. So you guys can hang out with us learn about our collaborative process. How do you make a music video remotely? How do you make a music video? So we're gonna have um, kind of a VIP Zoom session for people who donate um, to help us um, support us and sponsor future projects. And you can donate a dollar, one dollar, and you get to attend a VIP Zoom meet and greet. Um, so you guys can check that all out. It's all on my page. Um, so I really hope you enjoy these goodies. It's a very turbulent week for Jello Doll this week. Um, so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next month for the next live stream Cello Tip Tuesday. Good night, everyone. Bye.